Hi, and welcome to this new video about the SEPA instant credit transfer. In the previous video, we saw how clearing and settlement work for the SCT Inst. We learned that the SCT Inst is not cleared, but directly settled. We looked at TIPS, the main CSM used for the settlement of instant credit transfer. We saw that the majority of CSM performs the settlement through TIPS, but some like EBA or IBAPay do not. For CSM that do not use TIPS, how then do they settle the funds for the SCT instant? That's the topic of this video. Before talking about CSMs that do not use TIPS, I think it's really important to look at this picture again. Here we see TIPS and the main steps for settling an SCT instant. We saw it in details in the previous video. And the good news is the other CSMs operate exactly in the same way. The processing steps are the same. So this diagram is a good place to start, even for the CSMs that do not use TIPS for the settlement. So it's exactly the same pictures above, but we have another CSM in the middle. I took RTR1 of EBA to illustrate, but you can take any other CSM that does not settle through TIPS. On the right, the processing steps have been listed and they are the same. I just replaced TIPS with RTR1. But there's a difference, and it is highlighted on the bottom part on the picture. So here, as you can see, EBA RTR1 is connected to Target 2, the system operated by the European Central Bank and used for the transfer of central bank money among financial institutions. We will now focus on what happens between RT1 and Target 2 to understand why that link is required. CSMs that do not use TIPS need a connection to Target 2 for the funds transfer between those CSMs and the central bank system, Target 2. Each direct participant to RTA1 must open an account with RTA1. That account is sometimes referred to as a technical account. It is used exclusively for the settlement of SCT in process in RTA1. Again, what we see here is valid for any CSM that do not use TIPS for settlement. EBA RTA1 requests the direct participants to prefund their account with central bank money. So fund transfer must happen between RTA1 and the central bank system target 2. Once the funds arrive on RTA1 on the RTA1 account, it can be used to settle SCT INS transactions. When a participant sends an SCT INS, his account is debited. And if a participant receives an, an instant transfer, that will result in crediting that account with RTA1. So the balance of the participant's CSM account moves throughout the processing of the transactions. And logically, the direct participants must manage the liquidity on the CSM account. If there is too little money on the CSM account, the participants will add the funds. But if there is too much money, the participant can move the excess to his target to account and use it for other purposes. One consequence of all this is that direct participants to CSM that do not use TIPS must have an account in target two. To summarize, we saw how settlement happens directly in TIPS and in the CSMs that do not use TIPS. The next question now is, what about the CSM that settle through TIPS? That will be the topic of our next video. To really close the loop, I encourage you to watch that next video. You may be surprised by what you will learn. It was interesting for me to learn that, and I'm sure it will be the same for you. That's the end of this presentation. Please like the video if you learned something and subscribe to the channel to get a notification when the next video becomes available. You can go to permanentor.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and videos. See you soon on the channel.